You know, I had kind of hoped to do a little bit more of a dramatic reveal on this one, but the name is right on the box, so I got a Mazurphilos. Why don't we open it up and I'm gonna give you my first impressions about this grinder. Hey there, this is Future Me just jumping in really quick to let you know that after about a week of using the Philos grinder and a fresh haircut that I have some very cool updates that I really wanna share with you, but they're gonna be at the end of this video. I wanted to leave my first impressions whole and complete there. In the meantime, if you love my stuff, please do subscribe and let's get back to unboxing this thing. So. The cool thing about the Philos is it's an entry into a bit of a brand new category for Mazer, and that is of the kind of smaller single dosing grinders that you would commonly see at home, like the Niche Duo that I got back here. And also in a light commercial setting where they're doing kind of more single origin type stuff, you'll see these types of grinders. All right, yeah, it's heavy. So we're gonna open it up and see what we got going on. All right, so we'll just get all this stuff out of the way. So one thing, they gave me an option as to color. Obviously this was uh, sent to me by Mazer because you can't get them publicly yet. So first thing, we got this power cable. I have a love-hate relationship with power cables. I'm never totally happy with the power cable. And the color on this one, it's not black, which is kind of nice in some ways, but doesn't really feel like it matches the grinder. However, it does look like we have something that allows you to adjust the length. Open this up. Yeah, great. So this comes off and you can get in there and adjust the length of the power cord, which is super nice. There's one thing I do not like. It's having tons of extra power cable coiled up on my espresso bar. The niche grinders are the same actually. All right, so we got this box here. Welcome to the world of Mazer. Thank you for trusting us with your grinding needs. This grinder was handmade by Roberto. So Roberto, if you're watching this, thank you for making this. Your TLC is uh, definitely gonna be noted. Serial number 23315 something eight. User manual right here. All right, we got the hopper going on here. We got the chrome grind cup as well. All right, and I think this thing is called a dose finisher. I think that's what they call that. I'm probably gonna use it wrong, but whatever. And, oh, this is fun. All right, so these are uh, 64 millimeter burrs. This is a 64 millimeter grinder. A lot of people, when they first saw the body, they thought it would be an 83 millimeter grinder. It's actually 64. These are the uh, 189s, and they are stainless steel burrs. So are the other ones that I'm gonna assume are loaded in here. And these are kind of their espresso specific burrs. So these are gonna give you more velvety mouthfeel. Great for traditional espresso. And in here, we're gonna open it up in a minute. I'm pretty sure are the 200Ds. Now, let's just give an overview of the grinder first. You have the switch to turn it on. It's definitely got a very full-bodied hum, but I wouldn't say loud. We'll see how it grinds in a minute. You have the hopper up here. Now, one thing I love about this is it's got this little opener and closer. That feels really premium. I like that. It is a stepped grinder. You can see the steps on the back. My understanding is each step is six microns, which is really nice. I'll confirm that and test all of that. It can also be converted to stepless. You gotta take this thing off and then get in there, do a really quick procedure. There's a couple screws. I'm feeling like these steps are probably how I'll rock it in daily use for a bit, but I definitely will change it to stepless and we'll follow up on that as well. The switch right here is something that you saw a lot of people complaining about because it doesn't really totally match the quality of some of these other pieces, especially on the silver version. This kind of stands out a little bit more. I'm gonna take a guess here. I think this is probably due to some food and safety regulations for needing to use this type of grinder in a commercial environment. I don't know, but it is like a definitely a plastic button and it feels probably like my least favorite part about this grinder so far. This piece right here is plastic as well but from what I can tell, everything else on here feels like metal. The dosing cup is magnetized 
not actually onto the bottom like you see with a lot of other grinders, but it is magnetized onto this little arm right here. And what's really interesting, you can see these ridges here and there's a metal ridge right under here. This actually grounds the grind cup electrically. So as the grinds are coming out, it's acting as a kind of um, anti-static tech, which is very nice. We'll see how that works in real life, but pretty cool. And then you have this dose finisher here, which I think you can stick that up in there. Yeah, I think it actually catches the grinds in a little thing here. And uh, just to really thoroughly clean it if you're switching between different expensive single origin coffees. Pricing wise, this is coming in at a thousand euros. So, if it actually delivers at that price point, this is gonna be a really nice product. So let's see if we can get in here. I have no idea this is the first time I've done this. Oh, okay, that's nice and easy. So you got the faceplate here, giant Mazer logo on there. So that's kind of their MO. It's on the back of a lot of their commercial grinders. Not everybody's gonna love that, but I don't mind it. It's got these two wing nuts in here, and I've seen videos of people doing this. We're gonna take them off. They don't come all the way out, so you can't lose them, that's nice. Okay, that is really nice and satisfying. Okay, so in here, you can see those 200s in there, stainless steel, high uniformity burrs. We're gonna get right to those. It's got this auger right here, and it's actually got some coffee still in there, so they did some, uh, they did some testing on this, obviously. And this auger right here, even though it's got this huge kind of single blade that you can see on here, it is, apparently balanced. So that should mean that it won't vibrate your machine. Now I haven't tested that obviously yet or haven't even ground any coffee with it yet. So we'll have to see how that goes. It supposedly also is gonna match the feed rate to the burr output rate. Maybe not acting as a pre-breaker, but it is gonna be feeding uh, beans in at the same speed as they are gonna be coming out in theory. Now, when this grinder was released and I saw people at host posting pictures of these burrs on social media. I got very excited because this type of burr geometry is a lot more similar to a 64 millimeter burr made by a company called SSP. They're MP multi-purpose 64 millimeter burrs. And those burrs have kind of become the de facto go-to burr for filter coffee, especially, but also, you know, more modern style espresso with a very high uniformity. These ones have a lot of narrower of a finishing flat. You can kind of tell that even from pictures. But if Mazer can produce these burrs that even kind of come close to that SSP profile, I'm assuming at a way lower cost, that could really shake things up. So I think we should put this back together and grind some coffee with it. One critique that people had with this grinder when they first saw pictures of it was the adjustment mechanism on the back. It is definitely a lot more natural to do with two hands. It's almost even too big. You can do it with one hand, but I'm skipping steps there. All right, let's grind some coffee. I'm just gonna grab something. <clears throat> so all the way around the dial, we have 145 steps. So do the math, six microns a step, 145 steps. All right, I'm not gonna do any RDT. So I'm gonna go down, let's say 90. All right, so we got a little bit of popcorning there. Definitely a reason for that. We got a straight in out with no RDT and no static either. So that is very encouraging off the bat. I'll do a full retention test as part of the review later on. All right, so I'm gonna brew with a one to 15.5 ratio. I do a bloom and two pours. Look for a total brew time of uh, about two to two and a half minutes. Second pour. All right, so we finished up about 216, right where I would normally hope to. This is just like a normal Kenyan. We'll see how the flavor comes out. Mmm. That is a really good result for a first cup of coffee out of a grinder. Man, those flavors are very clear, very crisp. The acidity um, is, is coming forward quite nicely. Very nice. Okay, let's do some espresso, shall we? So I'm gonna do an 18 gram dose. Again, no RDT, we'll see how it comes out. Well, it's pretty fast, so I'll time it, but somewhere around 10 seconds, maybe a little less. But for now, let's pull this and see how it does. So that ran a little fast. It's a high uniformity burr, so I wasn't totally surprised by that. 
Yeah, and it, it tastes like it ran a little fast, but it's still drinkable. Definitely a little too acidic, so we're gonna try and tighten that up a little bit. So it's 17.3, so that's 0.7 grams of retention. Flicky flick. Now it's 17.6, so 0.4 grams. Let me just use this dose finisher here. Let's see what we can get out. We're within 0.2. So I'm gonna season these burrs with a couple of kilograms of coffee. I'll also test it with RDT and give that info in my full review. But for now, let's pull our second shot. All right, so that one was just a hair longer than I would normally look for. At this length of pull, I would normally get some uh, stringency starting to creep through, and I'm not really getting any of that in this. The acidity is coming forward. It's very sweet, very velvety. Mmm, that is, I'm getting like nectarine off that. Very nice. Definitely um, a clearer, more acidity forward espresso shot, even at a longer um, pull. So definitely gonna have to try some turbos with this. That was a very uh, traditional espresso shot. Very tasty. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm back. Well, I'm here. I'm back. Those were my first couple cups with the Philos, and I was very impressed with it at the time. And to be honest, I've continued to be pretty impressed with how this grinder has been reacting, but there are a couple things that I wanted to update specifically. Number one, there has been a little bit of scratching that has kind of happened on this bottom plate right here. I wasn't really surprised by that because it's chrome and you know, there's coffee grounds and stuff. Also, you would have heard me mention in that video, the sound, that kind of low frequency hum of this grinder before I could actually give them any feedback, Mazer reached out to me and said, hey, this grinder is vibrating a little bit more than we would like on 60 Hertz power, which is North American power. So there's gonna be some updated components there from them on this, what those exactly are, I don't know, but I will follow up once I get a little bit more clarity on that. Also in Europe, this spins at 1400 RPM and in North America, because of the power difference, it spins at about 1600 RPM. Couple things, there that you would have noticed. Number one, popcorning is definitely an issue for me. It wasn't that segment. You saw the beans popping out on one of my first grinds. If I'm not sticking this lid on here, there's gonna be some popcorning. Now, I did want to point out something specifically about that crazy auger that's in there. Now, after testing, getting some video footage, I can confirm that that auger is not a pre-breaker. It is a pre-demolisher. Just look at this. It is crazy what is happening inside this grinder with that pre-breaker. It's absolutely smashing up those beans in this super aggressive, intense way. I wasn't actually surprised at all to see it popcorn and given the violence of that pre-breaking that is going on. Compared to a Zerno Z1, for example, it's kind of gently guiding those beans in and breaking them along the way. This auger is just like pulverizing everything that goes in there. Now, I don't know exactly how that pre-demolishing is impacting the cup, but a couple thoughts. In combined with those really long finishing teeth, it's kind of smashing up the beans and then delivering them to those burrs with those super long finishing teeth. I think probably allowing for a very consistent grind size by the time they actually come out of there. One other thing that I have noticed in my first week is that clumps are like, non-existent on this grinder. And there doesn't seem to be a declumper. So I messaged Mazer to ask them what the secret sauce going on here was. And in a lot of grinders that clump, it's because the chamber on the outside of the burrs can't actually get cleared out quickly enough. And the beans kind of clump around in there from getting stuck in there. And because the input rate is matching the output, the grinder doesn't have any issues clearing out the grounds as they're coming out. Now, at least that's Mazer's response. My anecdotal observation would seem to indicate that that is working. Anyway, just a couple things I wanted to leave you with. I wanted to show you that pre-breaker footage specifically. I thought that was really cool. And I'm gonna throw it back to past me. So overall, this is very fun grinder, at least on my first 30 minutes impression of it. We have a very high quality fit and finish. We have the pretty legendary name of Mazer stepping into a new market. Everything feels really nice on it. It really has that going for it. We have the new burrs in here, which 
could really undercut and disrupt the SSP style market, depending on how they compare. We have delicious filter coffee and very present espresso and the option to drop in any other 64 millimeter burr that you want. So I'm gonna follow up with a full review video where I do all my typical tests. Let me know what your questions are about this grinder so that I can make sure they're all answered in that video. Now in the meantime, I got a couple of cups of coffee here to enjoy. I hope your next cup of coffee is fantastic and we'll see you next time. Cheers.